In this masking tutorial from the Russell Brown Show, I'd like to demonstrate some of the new features found here inside of Adobe Photoshop CS5 for masking. And especially in this case, I want to discuss decontaminating colors, especially here in this motion blur of these dove wings. Okay, I've got two images here, of course, from the iStock photo library. My first image here of my doves, and then my background right here. Targeting my dove image right here, let's start this project off with a color range selection. That seems like the best tool for this particular project because the doves are against such a solid blue background. So under the select menu, down here to color range, and then I can go in with my eyedropper and with my shift key selected, I can then add to the selection as you see here, making sure I have all the different shades of blue represented in the background. Then adjusting my fuzziness, in this case, I want to move this to a point where there's not too much transparency coming through the wings of the bird. That looks pretty good, so I now click OK. I can now go down here to this icon right here, my Masks Panel icon. Clicking on that to reveal this panel, and then finally clicking on this button right here to add the mask. Of course, this is the inverse of the mask, so I simply select invert down here at the bottom to get the opposite of the masks. A really nice capability built into the mask panel. Next, I want to adjust this and show you some of the great controls for decontaminating colors, which you can especially see here along the edge of the wings and especially in this area of the motion blur. So now I go down here and select mask edge right there. Let's zoom in on this so we can see these controls in action. Because what I want to do first is actually adjust the edge. I can first go over here and select radius. I want to increase my radius a bit, just like this. Then I can show my radius, of course, by checking this box right here to show my radius as it goes around the dove. You can see these areas of the head of the dove and the beak. You want them to be sharp, so you want a nice small area or radius of transition in this area here. But you want a big bold area around those areas of the wing. So to achieve that, I'm going to go into manual control here with this refine radius tool right here. So now I can go into my work area, change the size of my brush, either in the options bar or here from my keyboard with the close bracket, I can move this up in size. Then I can click right here on the edge to redefine this area of transition. And I'd like to have a really large area of transition right around the wings because that's where I want the greatest amount of motion blur. And of course, we can see this area of transition by clicking on Show Radius, just like that. Clearly, you can see here this small thin line around the head and beak, and then transitioning into this blurry region around the wing. Fantastic. So that looks great. Let's do it over here on this wing. And we want to do this on any portion of the dove that we might want to appear slightly in motion or in transition against the background image of our brick wall. Not to forget our second dove over here and any areas of transition here, especially this motion blur here. Let's select that and paint over it like that. Looks fantastic. An average user would stop now and say, this is successful. But you're not an average user because you want to take this to the next step. You want to use the decontaminate colors feature right down here. Check that out. Wait a minute. There's before with the blue fringe around the edge, then clicking on it, and it instantly takes it away. Wow. And if you adjust the amount over to the right, you can then get even better results. Look at that great motion blur we're putting back into the feathers by adjusting this decontaminate colors feature right here. Not only that, I also go in and do a little adjustment to the shift edge right here. Let's shift this out a little bit too much and shift this back so you can then delicately balance the combination of shift edge and your decontaminate colors to get your best 
transition between the two. I'm getting a nice transparency of that wing against that brick wall. In fact, I'm just going to push this a little bit farther because I can. I don't see anything happening badly over here near the head or the beak. That's staying nice and sharp, but I'm getting a beautiful motion blur on these other portions of the image as you see here. Fantastic. Now, you're thinking this is absolutely stunning and perfect. But wait, there's more. I'm going to click OK because I want to show you one final technique. Closing those all down, you can see that I have my copied layer right here. And that's a great feature, of course. It copies the layer. But with this motion blur or other projects that are really complex, I want to take this layer that we just created and duplicate it by dragging it down here to the base of the Layers tabbed panel. I have a duplicate. I then turn off this top layer because I want to demonstrate one final feature that you can use on different types of backgrounds with different images. Target this second image right here and change the Blend Mode. Now each image you're working with will have different properties. So you want to choose different types of blending to get the best results. I'm going to try screen right now. I'm going to screen this image into my background. See the nice white edges that it blurs into the background. Let's combine that with our original mask by turning on this original layer here, the one we just created, just like that. So we're combining the two together. Let's turn off this lower layer to see before and then after. It's interesting, but I wonder if one of the others might be better. I'm going to try something like soft light. That's a little bit better, not quite as extreme. And maybe even hard light. Ooh, that's even better. It has just the qualities I'm looking for. So you might choose the different blend mode that you're looking for. And of course, you can change the opacity of that blend mode to meet the exact needs for the project you're working on. Let's zoom back out and take a look at this. So we've created a really nice mask, started with color range, then using the new masking tools, and then finally with that secret recipe of the second layer set to a blending mode to blend in your background perfectly. There you have it, advanced masking using the new tools here inside of Adobe Photoshop CS5.